Well, hello, Shippensburg, and welcome to History Hangout. I figure, being a new year, we're going to try to do some new programs to kind of showcase something that's history related, whether it be in photographs, documents, or actual uh, physical objects. And I figure since the holidays are behind us and most of us got brand new toys to play with, no matter how old we are, I'd go ahead and talk a little bit about 18th century children's toys and some of the games that they may have played. And some of the games that they may have played during the 18th century, you know, Blind Man's Bluff, Hide and Seek, and such like that. So let's go ahead and try to connect our present to the past. So, have you ever played tag or hide and seek? Have you ever played hopscotch or yo-yos or puzzles? Jump rope maybe perhaps? Dominoes, cards? Marbles? Leapfrog? Well, if you have, you pretty much already have a connection to the 18th century. Um, as you can see with this drawing, we have children playing with marbles, and then we also have catch a ball and a cup, or in this case, with a stick. Now, do grant a lot of the toys during this time period, it really depends on the wealth status of the family. So if you take this portrait here of the two children, and one's in a, kind of like a goat cart, and the other one is holding the reins of a goat, if you were not a well-to-do family, this might not be the type of games that you'd be playing with. Instead, you might be playing games kind of like what you see in this drawing here. We have a child with a kite, spin a tops, um, roll a hoop. So this pretty much is what the average uh, class of children and what they have had access to. And of course, here's another drawing here. You can kind of see like the, uh, the nine, what is it called, nine pen, which is kind of like a, the precursor to bowling. Um, you can also see the spin of tops here. What appears to be a ball throwing here, a child up on stilts. And of course, a friendly game of cricket and of course, a child on a swing set. So again, this is probably more toward what the middle class of colonial American children would have had more access to. And of course, when you look at portraits, they have a lot of really unique characteristics to them, such as the card stacking game that you see the mom playing with this child here, or the animals that these uh, children here are holding. Even You can kind of tell the dog has been playing with the children, basically with the stick that it has in its mouth. Then, of course, this boy here has a small staff, and attached to it is a flag, just so he can run around and play like this. But then you look at details of other portraits, such as this young lady here, who basically has a bad uh, mitten set, so she's got her racket as well as the bad mitten uh, birdie itself. And that was a very popular game to play, as you can see in this drawing here, with these two children playing back and forth. Also, these children here are playing a friendly game of catch. Now, learning music, if you were in the upper class, perhaps the parents would buy instruments as toys for the children to learn how to play music, such as this child here with the... Uh, the fiddle or the violin or this viola type instrument here that this young lady's playing. And then you look over here with these two boys. Now I can see he's holding something in his hand but I can't make out what it is. And then you can see something here with the handle that he's holding and a rope going down through that. So that's just another kind of like a string toy um, that he was playing with. And then for this family here Obviously, the father is definitely playing some kind of an instrument that you blow into. But if you look down here, there's a, a toy drum uh, for his children to play with. And then this one here, again, a very wealthy uh, family for these children here. But you can see that we have a hurdy-gurdy, so it's another musical instrument. But we also have a box with what appears to be maybe a pet, like a pet rabbit in there. 
So again, you kind of see where pets are almost like toys that children would play with. This girl here has a triangle here. And then you can kind of see that she's sitting on what appears to be kind of like a magic projecting machine. And then a tambourine down here as well. But then you have regular toys that we also identify with today, such as this very beautiful doll. Dolls came in all shapes and sizes. Some were dressed very fancy like this. Others were not. Here you have another portrait of two little girls, and you can see their dollies are also in the portrait there. So some really great detail when you're looking at these portraits uh, from the 1700s. Again, a very uh, wealthy child. You can see she's playing with her doll, but you also see that she's got a ring. Um, she's got jewelry here on her wrist, as well as a necklace, and what appears to be jewelry that's either on her ears or is attached to her headdress she has there. Boys also had dolls. We would call these action figures today, but boys' dolls during this time period often reflected uh, different things, such as maybe military soldiers. And you can see this boy here, as well as his sister, they're playing with what appears to be a military doll. And you can see the wagon wheels with the rope um, for him to pull behind, as well as a doll sitting inside. This one here is very interesting. Um, I see a lot of horses that are on like a platform with wheels. This one here is actually of a dog, a poodle style dog. Um, you can see where the string he is holding in his hand. You have the doll here toy drum with the drumsticks here and then I'm not sure what this is but it almost looks like it has keys on it kind of like an accordion style instrument and then I don't know why he's playing with the horse's whip there maybe it's so he can make noise with it again you have another wealthy family but if you notice over here in the corner this little girl is bringing out her favorite toy, which is a horse on wheels. Card games were very popular, stacking cards, and that's what this girl here is doing. You can see the base and how she's closing in on the top and trying to stack, and how she would shape the cards in order for them to stay straight. Same way with this one here. This child here apparently is setting them up kind of like um, when you set dominoes up and you knock them over. Another example of a type of card building game. And the same way with this one here. You need to see how he's bent the cards into kind of like a, a in half to form like a triangle shape. That way he can continue stacking on top. I love this portrait here because you can see where the girls were building and it started to fall over. But then down here you see the toy drum and of course a spin top, which is where you take this and you wrap it around. And then you basically you whip it. Here we have what's called knuckle bones. And I'm thinking knuckle bones is kind of like a, a pickup jacks. So she has a ball and then she has her knuckle bones down here that she would pick up. Here's another example of the game being played. Now this portrait here goes back to about the 1600s. Here's an excellent portrait again. You have the dog, but you also have toys such as the drum and drumsticks horse on a platform with wheels. And then of course here, you have a windmill type of toy and coming out from under it, you can see a rope with a small handle there. So maybe it's something that he can wind it up and then pull down, which makes it spin. Now we have what's called spool ball or cricket. So you can see the the paddles here were kind of like the bat style um, object as well as the ball. And 
again, same thing in this photograph here or portrait here. And of course, here they are playing the game of cricket. Now, a lot of these portraits that I see, toys, bow and arrow, for an example, was very popular among boys. So you can barely make it out, but here's the bow as well as the string here. Again, you can see this child here is holding his bow. And then with his sisters, this one here is actually demonstrating on how to shoot it. And of course you can see the arrow, and then down here up against his hat you can see extra arrows here. Then you have roll hoop or the hoop. Another very popular uh, game to play. Bubbles. So here you can see this gentleman is teaching the little child there how to basically blow bubbles. So here in this cup or glass, you have your kind of like your soap mixture, and you can see there's a spare stem right there. Here you have a child. Now this portrait here is probably early 1800s, but it's a perfect example because he has taken his father's um, clay smoking pipe and that's how he is using it to make or to blow bubbles. Again, a laundress with a small child, and you can see the child is doing exactly the same thing, just blowing it and trying to make bubbles. Spinning top, very popular game. And then you also have another version of spin top, so here's the bottom portion, and here's what you use to basically whip it. And the object is to make it spin. Now, if you came from a very wealthy family, you may have furniture that is actually used as a toy, such as this rocking horse here. Skittles is what I think this game is, and that's where they have sticks set up. And they basically try to roll the ball into them. Kite flying was very popular um, during this time period. And they had all kinds of different shapes, materials that the kites were often made from. Now these ones here, I've seen quite a lot of photographs, or not photographs, but portraits of children holding to be what's a walking stick, but then when you look carefully, you can see an object, a metal object, like a blade sticking out. So, I'm not sure why they would use that as a toy, as a kind of like a throwing lance, but I've seen a lot of examples of that already. Toy guns were very popular among children, and some of these muzzle loaders looked almost as if they were real. The only difference is, is you're talking about an adult that's this size versus a child this is, that's about that size. And there's a perfect example of children praying through town during like a military march. So you have the flags, you have the toy guns, the uniforms, so costume, play, costume playing was very important. You got the boy who is basically keeping the beat as they're marching through town. And then you have the officer, and or in this case maybe it's a, a girl who is acting as a queen leading her army out. But you can see she has her staff here. And that might not be a girl, that could be a boy who has not come of age yet to wear breeches yet. Here you see a little girl kind of warming herself up against the stove, but if you look down here in the corner, you can see an ice skate. Ice skating is a very popular form of entertainment outside during the winter time. But then you have the African American population. Most of them were enslaved, 
And he would figure, well, maybe the kids didn't have time to play games. But actually, after doing some research and reading quite a few articles, I found out that they played jump rope or they had competitive games like swimming or running. Um, smut, which is played like cards, and that's where basically a grain of corn has the numbers on it to represent what the card would be. Marbles, storytelling was very uh, popular. It was how the, the adults could keep their traditions of their country alive for future generations. Dolls, of course, and of course the, uh, the stick riding horses. So, when did children stop being children? Well, by the time that they reached the age of 14, most children were considered as adults by this time period. Therefore, the boys would take up the father's trade or leave home to become an apprentice. And then women, the girls, they would start learning how to manage a household. And then from there, they were expected to marry, most likely between the ages of 14 and 20. So you can see childhood during this time period was not nearly as long as what childhood is during our time period. So thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this. Hopefully you learned some, um, some of the uh, things that kids would have played with using the primary sources, in which in this case we had drawings as well as portraits to kind of back up what we see. Until then, my name is John Miller. I'm the Executive Director here at the Shippensburg Historical Society, and I look forward to working with the community here in 2021. Thank you.